Let's now bring in our guest to talk about this whole story, Tim Fernholtz of the American Prospect, Dan Mitchell of the Cato Institute. Now, gentlemen, before we begin our discussion of the jihad against insurance companies and President Obama speaking with a forked tongue, I want you to hear Mr. Obama and his forked tongue earlier today at a campaign stump speech on health care. Take a listen. If this vote fails, the insurance industry will continue to run amok. They will continue to deny people coverage. They will continue to deny people care. They will continue to jack up premiums 40 or 50 or 60 percent as they have in the last few weeks without any accountability whatsoever. In the last few weeks, I don't know what he's talking about. There isn't a single insurance company that got that. And I want to say this before we start this off. Courtesy, hat tip to my great friend Alan Reynolds. I guess in the left-wing blogosphere, Tim, I'm going to go to you on this. Please. Yeah, listen, uh, one of the WellPoint subsidiaries, Blue Cross Blue Shield, Anthem Blue Cross Blue Shield in California, requested, requested a 35 to 39 percent increase. Now, a request was not granted. A request is not Isn't that is an argument for regulation? A Isn't that an argument that those requests law, shouldn't be Tim. granted? No, because they didn't get it. And you know they wouldn't exactly. get it. Exactly. And without so, the kind of uh, so stuff, what's he talking not every about? state can do that. Larry. What's he talking about? In he, Michigan, there is no they asked fact. for a 50%. He's the president, Tim. Let me ask the question before you come out. There <laughs> is no factual basis for Mr. Obama's constant daily charge that Everything insurance that companies are true. raising rates are, are companies 40 to 50%. using rescission to drop people from their health insurance? Wait, Plans? Wait, 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 Absolutely. Don't, don't change the Carolina subject. Recently. Don't change the That's subject. That's what the president said. That's Give what me the, the name. Said. Give me the name of mm. a single health care insurer that raised their premiums by 30, 40, or 50 percent. Give me one name. I think if you look at the requests that are coming in in Michigan, they wanted to raise it 56 percent. Give me in a name. In Washington State. Those are requests. The states will never grant them. There's too much competition. But not every state has the ability to review those requests, and that's why the president's bill has that power across the country right, so that no one is subject right, to those Tim, increases. Tim, you are not addressing the issue. You are sidestepping the issue, and I'm disappointed in you. I want to go to Dan <laughs> Mitchell on this. Dan, I'm going, to put Sorry a, to disappoint. I'm going to put a chart up on the board from Alan Reynolds, the Consumer Price Index for Health Care Insurance Premiums. This is... Was it's a, a very misleading chart, incidentally. I, maybe so. I, I'm going to grant you that. What it shows is that the inflation has raised 4% over the Tim, year. Let me ask Dan Mitchell, for God's sakes, before you come out. Tell him about annualized. It's up 10 or 12%. These are 12 month changes. Now, they've only been keeping the data for five years or so. So that's why this chart starts at the end of 2006. That's the first 12 month change. It's not seasonally adjusted, but it is all urban consumers. 12 month change, CPI for health insurance. It uh, falls off a cliff in the last couple years. Now, Dan, Tim makes a good point that in a recession, premiums might go down. I'm willing to concede that point. But what does interest me, Dan, is um, just about a year after the recession ended, it continues to level off. So I want to ask you, how does President Obama come off accusing insurance companies of getting 30, 40, 50 percent premiums when they have not, and the consumer price index chart shows that there's nothing like that. In fact, in the last two years, premiums have gone down, Dan Mitchell. He has the whole story wrong. What's your take? Well, clearly the president's engaging in some massive exaggeration, if not outright lying, as part of the end game on this battle. But in some sense, this is like, on the list of all the lies that are being told, this is like number 10 or 12. Uh, the fact that a giant new entitlement program is supposed to reduce the deficit, I'll bet my left-wing friend, the, uh, whatever amount of money he wants, that the deficit will go up as a result of this. And I don't even think the deficit is what's important. This is a giant expansion of the welfare state to make America like Greece. Why anybody would think that's a good idea, I don't know. On the issue of premiums, we have to remember that there's a cart and a horse and what comes first. Rising health insurance premiums over time, let's set aside this, this blip where they've gone down, rising health insurance premiums over time are a reflection of rising health care prices because of all the government and intervention, regulation, And that's exactly why we need to look subsidies. at how insurance companies operate. This, this uh, effort by no, the president it's, it's is going to force why we need to get rid of this third-party payment, and Obama's proposal is increasing third-party payment. We have not had what a free market in health care since probably 1965. One at a time, one at a time, one at a time, one at a time. All right, mm -hmm. go ahead, Tim. I want to add one thing. I actually have two more things I want to add to the pot. The uh, Caterpillar Company, which is a great American manufacturer, they wrote a letter to uh, Speaker Nancy Pelosi, March 18, 2010. 
And they say that the new uh, plan is going to drive up Caterpillar's health costs by 20%, which is over $100 million in year one. Okay? Now, second, I want you to deal with this one. Mr. Obama, in addition to speaking with a forked tongue, about 40 and 50 percent insurance premium hikes, which has never happened. And in fact, the CPI data show insurance premiums are falling in recent years. He also has accused them of making excess profits, okay? Businesses, by the way, are in the business of making profits. So, courtesy of University of, uh, Prof uh, University of Michigan professor Mark Perry on his great Carpe Diem blog site, he shows there are 16 healthcare sectors. Healthcare insurance ranks 10th of 16th with a profit margin of only 4.4%. Drugs, 22%. Biotech, 11%. Uh, medical labs, 8%. This is a silly way 8%. to measure how... So you know, I want to ask you, on insurance premiums rising 40%, Mr. Obama speaks with forked tongue. On excessive profits for insurance company, he speaks with forked tongue. This is a credibility problem your man has, Tim. I don't think it's a credibility problem at all. What the president was saying is that without changes to the system, your health care costs are going to keep going up. And the Congressional Budget Office has shown that this bill lowers health care costs across the board. And the reason why it's important that to look so at what... That is so not true. Yeah, that's exactly what it says. Look at, look at the report. And I'll tell you what, what so, the president is trying to do is The administration force... says that total health care costs are You're going up under You're a free market guy, this right, Larry? You like free markets? You like competition? Why not introduce some competition into the insurance business? That's the problem right now is there's no incentive what? for insurers to negotiate Why down not the cost of the heart. I got an idea, by the way. I agree with your pro-capitalist views, whether you mean them or not. I, think I we mean them have very sincerely. I think you're going to talk about right. state regulation that right now, are you? I'm going to so say, you want to set no, up a situation where we have 50 different regulators on Tim, one industry Tim, and we'll see the same on kind of arbitrage Tim, we saw in the financial crisis, Tim, Larry. Interstate interstate insurance purchases would be competitive. And as Dan Mitchell said earlier, But they if would. You it would have, be a total distortion Tim, by government regulation. The be, kind of I, thing that you should rail against. I beg your pardon. First of all, I, I don't know if the state regulators are not going to allow 40% premium hikes. But the point I'm making is a different point, if you'll listen. It's going to be a race to the bottom. Interstate competition is one of the keys to creating a true marketplace nationwide, just like In President shares. Obama's health care bill, there he are has, provisions that allow states to get together and no. create their own no. he, uh, he, open marketplaces. I beg your pardon. They, they do not permit interstate purchases. That's a key point. And this, the second point that I'll make here is get rid of the third-party payment system, as Dan Mitchell suggested. Dan, I want you to argue this because I, you need to teach Tim how this works. What if we give the tax break to the individual family, Dan, so they have to spend out of pocket rather than the business or the government? Well, first, let me make one point about profitability by industry. The pharmaceutical companies that were number one on your list, they're the ones that are in bed with the White House. They're the ones spending millions of dollars on ads in favor of government-run health care. So all this left-wing demagoguery against big business, somehow it goes quiet when big business gets in bed with big government to screw over Ooh. taxpayers and consumers. Crony capitalism. But on your point about, about third-party payment, yeah, and, and this is like we're a banana republic. It's really depressing what's going to happen to America. Oh, come uh, on. But in terms of your point about third-party payment, what we have to realize is that 46 cents out of every dollar for health care in America is directly financed by government, and then a majority of the rest comes as a result of the tax exclusion for employer-provided care. Only 12 cents out of every dollar is paid for out of pocket. Mm. No wonder we don't have a functioning health care system. And the one place we do, cosmetic surgery and laser eye surgery, where we actually have a functioning free market, not over insurance and third-party payment, quality goes up every year and prices come down or are stable. That's the success story. We should be emulating it. And the president is trying to do that. That's what the health care excise tax is. It's saying that no, this he's income is not going to be taxed. Payment. And also the way He's that he's expanding gives... third party payment. <laughs> you can keep repeating that. We have over insurance and he's making it worse. Uh, he's and we're going to wind up with don't a have system. the insurance, the ability to buy it while putting in measures to control costs. 1.4%. Yeah, well, first of all, he's dumping lots of people into Medicaid, which inflation. is a giant welfare expansion. And then he's talking about subsidies that are simply going to drive up the cost. 
Just like everything the government gets involved with. We subsidize higher education, we get higher tuition. We subsidize health care, we get rising health care right. prices. Government is the cause of all the problems in the wanna, sector. I just want to put that chart back on the board. The <laughs> consumer right. price that index people who are satisfied for health insurance. With their Medicare and their I just want to put that, that back on the board. Because that thing has dropped like a stone in the last couple years. Maybe some of that is recession, as Tim Fernholz has suggested. But I think the fact that it it's is leveling... It's still higher than price inflation and higher off, than wages. It is leveling off at a... It, look, it has actually declined in the last two years. And i got to tell you... Thanks to the recession. I don't appreciate Mr. Obama attacking the profits of the insurance companies when the facts show that their profit margins are I think if shareholders are, are concerned low. about insurance company what profits, got they should look at how much they're paying their chief executive insurance companies. officers. This Tens of millions of dollars to run G these companies. I'm and sorry. these shareholders you, are you just got not paying attention to Tim, it. Tim, you and my other left-wing friends hate big business, you hate business, and you hate profits. Not Isn't true, that not at the true. bottom here? You want the government to run the business sector, I want the and you want to the government to run the health care sector. Isn't that your real agenda, Tim? Absolutely not. This plan that you're seeing here is extremely centrist. It's similar to plans proposed by moderate Republicans in the 90s. What it does is it helps the private system. It leverages what the public system can do to make it easier for the private system to work better. Dan Mitchell, do you regard this as a centrist plan? And by the way, do you regard this as a budget-busting non-centrist plan? Well, it's a centrist plan in terms of the French political spectrum, in terms of the U.S. <laughs> system, hey, though. Hey, this hey, is hey, a radical Europe. expansion of government. And, and let's Again, I'll, I'll bet Tim any amount of money that we will have a bigger deficit, bigger government, higher taxes, slower growth, more unemployment. The notion that bigger government is going to solve the problems in the health care system caused by government is, is such a logical impossibility that my head's going to explode. Hey, Be careful. Hey, Tim, did you go to graduate school or anything in Britain? No, I didn't. Because, you know, the Brit this is a copy of the, Brit why of the British plan National Health Care System. That's why Obama's plan is nothing like Britain. It's this, not like this Europe is at all. Like that. I thought maybe that's why you liked it so much. Mm, no, Just sir. Kidding. Just kidding. All right, gentlemen, thank you very much, Tim Fernholtz and Dan Mitchell.